When did you start going hanging out on the corners with the clicks? Well, I didn't start really hanging out in the corner with the clicks like that till you got jumped into Drew Street when I was in seventh grade. Welcome back, everybody. We got a good one for you today. Our guest is Cristina La Negra from the Indicted TV podcast. Cristina embodies 90s Chicana LA culture. She's a former gangbanger from a clique called The Avenues, and they come from Glassell Park, this little neighborhood in Northeast LA that was one of the hottest blocks back in the 90s and the 2000s. She got indicted on a 100-man RICO charge and sent up to do Fed time for five years. She has some hilarious, amazing, sometimes heartbreaking stories of love, drug use, and loss. But she came home, she cleaned herself up, and today she is drug-free. She runs a thriving business, and now she's got one of the hottest new podcasts in Los Angeles. It's all about prison, doing time. You've got to check it out, especially if you love this show. Go over to IndictedTV.com. And of course, if you want to hear a bonus episode with Christina, and you're going to want to because we love this girl, go over to Patreon.com slash The Connect Show. All right, let's get into the episode. I hear like a boom, 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 boom. Mind you, I live in the second floor. So I look outside my window and I see like smoke. Everybody's getting raided at the same time. I'm like, what's that? Like, what am I getting charged for? And they're like, you are getting frequent dieting. That's when I see lights behind me start to flash. And I didn't even think, I just hit it. I was driving like my life depended on. And then I parked the car, hopped out, closed the door, and I started running. And he pulls out a burner, shanks, like six inches. And then he passes it to me. And he goes, here, that's yours. Don't ever leave the cell block without this. He was the reason I made it out of that place alive. Cristina La Negra Gutierrez Rorigue Ore Orejuelo. Como esta? Uh, good. I'm just kidding. How many names, how many last names? I just have, have, I have just Cristina Cruz. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you, Cristina Cruz. Likewise. Thank you for coming on the show. I know we filmed uh, this new YouTube channel that we're getting ready to launch. That's how we met. Uh, and I found you a fascinating character. And now you have one of the hottest new podcasts yes. coming up, which you guys have to go check out. Tell us the name of it. Indicted TV, guys. Yeah, it's Indicted really TV. it's really a great uh, model for like building a podcast. So yes. we really, I want you guys to go check out Indicted TV. Um, you know, you're from Los Angeles. You're from my favorite era in American history and LA history, the 1990s, a long lost but amazing decade. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. We'll part in the beginning. Go ahead. I where I was born? Yeah. Okay, well, I was born in 1982. <laughs> I will be 41, just so you know. Yeah. Looking great, though, girl. Yes. Keep it up. Keep putting that fat on. Keep what do you, do you put the grease on your face? I don't do shit, to be honest. I barely even wash it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, no, I was born in 82. I was, um, my parents had me when they were, my mom was 18. And my dad, I believe, was 20. They are from Nayarit, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, they came. You know, they crossed. Well, how old were they when they crossed? They were 18 because they just, they came and then they, I got, she got pregnant right away, obviously. Right? You're they the got oldest? Married. I'm the oldest, yeah. And um, I was born like in, around, actually right down the street, not, to, uh, this is where I grew up, kind of right down the street, not too far from here. South Central. South Central. Okay. I don't, Interesting. I didn't want to say. That's okay. It's a big neighborhood. Um, So yeah, we were, my parents were there Um, so I think I was like five years old and we moved to Hollywood. My dad worked from par for Paramount Pictures. So, um, what did he do for Paramount? He worked in the kitchen. He was a chef. And um, did your parents cross illegally, or did they have paperwork? No, they had uh, passports. Okay, yeah. real passports, real not passports. those ones you could buy from yeah, no, the Tienda. Real ones. Okay, yeah. cool. How did they get that? I don't know. I think it was easier to get a visa like way back then because he's had it since he was a kid. Right, it was for sure. Especially because my my dad lived in Tecate which is Tecate, Baja. Right on the border. Right, literally on mm -hmm. the border. Um, so they literally like, the border was here and they lived like a block away. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I think it was very easy for them before. Just show them, I don't, I don't know, you know? Yeah. So um, yeah, we lived and we moved to Hollywood. I went to kindergarten there. Um, I only remember going to kindergarten in Hollywood and then we moved back to Exposition and Martha Luther King. And my parents got divorced. Mm, okay. Right when we moved to back to South Central. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister. She is 36 for my mom and my dad. 
Okay. My mom only had two girls, which is myself and my sister. Uh, my dad remarried, and I have um, my dad remarried, and I have a bro- another. I have a brother and a sister, but they were much younger. My okay. brother is going to be twenty two years old. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so much younger. I love my my little brother and my little sister. But um, yeah, my parents got divorced, and once my parents got divorced, uh, I moved to uh, Glassell Park. That's right. Now, and that is the neighborhood that we filmed in. Yes. And in a tiny little six block little square is uh, a, what's known as the Avenues. Yes. And tell us about the Avenues, how it was like uh, back in the day when you moved there. So uh, we, I was like, I believe I was like eight years old or nine, the oldest, because I know I was just starting the fourth grade. Okay. And, um, I still remember the same day we moved in. I we lived on Andrita Street, which was so uh, where we lived. It's like um, the Fletcher Drive because it's Fletcher and San Fernando Road. Mm. So it's Fletcher, Andrita Street, Drew Street, and and then Chapman. Yeah. And um, I remember looking because I live in a two story apartment, and I remember looking out the window and I seen like like a big old crowd of guys, you know, bald head and. Cholos. Cholos. Like old school. One, uh, one thing I didn't mention was like when my parents were still together, my aunt, which is my dad's brother, my, my dad's sister had seven boys. Ah, so you got a lot of cousins. I have a lot of boy cousins. Okay. And um, they, my boy cousins are from Dead and Harpies. And that is a gang. A gang. Uh, out here, I believe in South Central or like this side, right? Mm-hmm. Um, And I would see them outside with their friends and- um. So they would come up to the avenues and kick no, it? No, 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 no. This is me with my parents. Okay. We're still together. Gotcha, gotcha. So my aunt used to babysit me. So obviously I'd seen all my cousins and my girl cousins would like do feathers on me. And I, they would buy me like the little booty socks. So I was always like, I always thought it was cool like to be a gang member. Mm-hmm. Right? Always. Like I always wanted to be a gang member because mm-hmm. my cousins, they're my cousins, right? And um, now to, to back then to you, what did a gang member mean? Well, it just meant like you have this, you're from this group where they're all your friends and you're just hanging out with your friends outside. Obviously I've experienced a drive-by because this was like in the 80, like early, maybe like 90 or 89 mm-hmm. years, you, you know what I'm saying? 1989 or whatever years, but it was like way, way, way when I was young. Do you remember the first drive-by shooting you yeah, saw? Yeah, well, uh, we were all, we were inside my house and I had my, my cousin, my cousin, he's a big boy, right? So... He might, they started shooting and my aunt said, didn't say like throw yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and my cousin, my cousin, he's a big boy. So he threw himself and then he was like, I remember, <laughs> it's so funny. Cause I, I remember like him, like kind of rolling and he's only like two years older than me. So we were kids. We were like five, six year old kids just like experiencing these things. So obviously this is like 89, yeah. 1989, 88, whatever, you know? And um, that was like my first experience. And not that it's like traumatizing because I probably never even thought about it again. But yeah. I just do remember my cousins outside playing, not playing, but hanging out with their friends, you know? Yeah. Looking cool. Yeah. You know, they didn't, they weren't bald before they had like the yeah. their home back with the duck towel, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. That, that look, that classic South Central LA Chicano Cholo look, when did the bald head become popular? I think maybe like in night, like in mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah, because it was all it was always the slick back. Because Mexicans have the best hair. You see a seventy year old Mexican man; he's got a hairline that starts at his eyebrows. Yes. So that you guys used to they used to slick it back with the three with the flower cone. stuff. That's right, right. And then everybody started going bald, shaving the head, which yeah. probably started in prison because it's so stressful in there. <laughs> Everybody's bald. Yeah. You know, but the drive by shooting was people don't understand that are younger in L. A. The drive-by shooting back in the 80s and 90s was what school shootings are today. There's a protocol. Like grandmothers would know to tell their kids when you hear shooting, throw Throw yourself yourself. on the ground. Yes. Because it affected everybody in those neighborhoods because they would come by and spray and hit houses that had nothing to do with it. Yes. Did bullets ever come into that house? In the house, house? yes. I believe that they did. Obviously, thank God nothing happened or whatever. But um, Were they targeting your house? It was my cousin's. They were going to see my cousins. Oh, and your cousins were at in your house? <laughs> yes, they were outside. Oh, wow. Because my aunt's house was the spot where everybody- Everybody came. Yeah. Do you remember like, did anybody get hit outside? No. Any of your cousins get hit? I don't, I don't think so. Because I don't, I, yeah. I don't think so though. Because I would have remembered, you know, I would have remembered that's like a big thing. Like, oh yeah. my God, they mataron somebody, they killed somebody outside. Yeah. But obviously that didn't happen. Do so. you remember 
anything else about your cousins when you were a little kid, like any kind of criminal activity? Like what, what stands out to you about it's, what they did? Honestly, basically just them just staying outside. Like I don't ever remember them doing any kind of criminal activity. Drinking 40s though? I don't know if they drink 40s <laughs> then. Did they drink 40s? I mean, we assume, I assume that- I don't know, to be honest, maybe like smoke weed the most, but yeah. I was so young, I don't remember. Okay. You know? Okay. So now we're, but now we've left South Central yes. and we're in Glass Hill Park. Yeah. My parents got divorced. Yeah. And um, the guy, my mom started going out with after my parents were divorced. Um, His mom and his stepdad lived on Chapman. Right. Which is the third street, right where the cemetery is. That's right. In, you know? in, in the avenues. Yes. In Glass Hill Park. And um, we moved there and this man was a crackhead. And my mom had no idea. Oh, yeah, the boyfriend, her the boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah, oh, he was smoking crack. Smoking crack, especially in them days. Mm -hmm. um, he would leave, and um, mind you, well, back to my first day of me living there. Mm -hmm. Like I could look outside. There's like thirty guys, girls outside, and I'm like, man, one day I want to, I want to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, because it looked fun. It right? just looked cool, you know. And there was like a fight. I don't know. I remember though, you know. And yeah. it's just as time went, like you know, all my neighbors were my friends. Yeah. And we were just hanging out, playing, playing outside. Yeah. Yeah. It was nothing, it was nothing new, but you know, they were still there. Mm -hmm. We would pass by, go to school and, oh, hey, that's my cousin. Or, hey, not my cousin, but like my friend's brothers, my friend's cousins and things like that. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't have no family. I still don't have any right. family that's actual, like that's, you know, like a- Right. You didn't have a big Mexican family. Well, I have a big Mexican family. But not immediate family though. Yes. So, immediate family, but no gang members besides my dad's nephew. Right. Right. Um, so when you're walking to school as a little kid, are you passing by groups of these big yeah. cholo dudes? Yeah. Well, maybe not big, but like, you Whatever. know, to me, they were big, yeah. like, you yeah. know, like, right. I thought it was cool. I would mm -hmm. see them. I would like, it's like yeah. I thought I was fascinated right. by it. Right. You know, one day. Right. And, and what day was that? What age were you when you finally left the stoop, so to speak, and hit the street? Well, I was in the seventh grade. Uh, so it's like, you know, um, you go to junior high. Mm -hmm. We're all going to junior high, all my friends. And we're from, you know, that area. And we know what gang is there. So it's like, you know, where it's like a clique, Drew Street, you know? Right. So we're, and they we're all elementary, junior high. We're friends or brothers are actual gang members mm -hmm. from the avenues and mm -hmm. we just looked up to them, you know? And they're so, all Latinos, these guys. Yes, and yes. they're from Guerrero, right? A lot of them are from Guerrero. Like a lot of them that are from Drew Street, because you know, Drew Street is yeah. a clique. They're, they're, they're all from Guerrero. Yeah, that's really interesting. So you go, we drove up this long street called Drew Street mm -hmm. and all of the families, many of them still live there today. Yeah. They're, they come from Guerrero State yes. in Mexico. Yes. That's and you so saw, they still remembered me. Yes, yes. All the ladies. Totally, the tamale ladies remembered Christina. It's it fascinating. Was, honestly, it was really, I thought it was so cool. It was like perfect timing. It's not, I mean, I go there all the time, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, I haven't seen them in a few months or because I haven't gone maybe like in whatever prior to us going, maybe like yeah. four months. So uh, I thought it was like so cool. It was like perfect timing while we're filming that these ladies are there and they're like, Hey, yeah. it just fits so like perfect. That like, was I mean, really sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you start getting into trouble? When did you start going hanging out on the corners with the clicks? Well, I didn't start really hanging out in the corner with the clicks like that till, um, cause we got jumped into Drew Street when I was in seventh grade. You got jumped in. Yes. Tell us about getting jumped in. So it was uh, two girls and um, <laughs> two big girls, right? But. They were like, no, she's like, we, oh, we got to get you a game because we didn't get you good. Like, bro, you guys are two big ass <laughs> fucking girls. Fucking, I'm all small, you know, but whatever. We were still friends. Like, it was my, it was my best friends. Like, so from then we will. And they started punching you? Yeah, we, we, fought, we fought, you know? Right, right. So and, we're, so did you get any licks in back or were they, did they just beat you down? Nah, they didn't beat, beat me down like that. I would love to get jumped in by girls. Hey, <laughs> bring four of them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it wasn't like that, you know? So from that day on, obviously my, I started changing. Like, you know, I kind of wanted to start dressing a little different, mm. you know, like I started coming home a little later. I would hang out with her a lot more because her family, like her brothers and like, you know, like they will go to the movies every Thursday. All the gang members will go on Thursdays. I, we started going with them, like just things like that. Like, yeah, right. You know, cause keep in mind, I'm still young. Right. You know, you're in middle so, school still. Yeah. So I get to high school, the ninth grade. I start, well, I, we graduated 
uh, junior high, whatever, eighth grade. And um, I, we get to, I go to Eagle Rock High School. Mm -hmm. I know the gang ones. And then. It was Eagle Rock High School. Was that a gang high school? Were there uh, no, sets? Was, Franklin was a little more of a gang okay. high school. But that was kind of a more like, it was more like party crew days. Mm. You obviously have your gangs, but for Eagle Rock, not as much because there's kind of only like avenues. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't have like one Highland Park or whatever, but it wasn't like that. Like at least for me in the ninth grade, it wasn't like that. Like those are all still my friends, but I got more into like the party scene, hanging out with the seniors. Cause in the nineties, it was like a major party scene, like house parties. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a freshman and I'm kicking it. I'm hanging out with the, with the seniors. That's a big deal. Oh no. I yeah. was super cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But keep in mind, I still I go home and these are still my friends outside. You know what I'm right. saying? And um, my friends all started now. Now they start getting into the gang. Mm -hmm. They're still my friends. Like we're still homies. Like I'm still from Drew Street. Like, you know, it's me. And um, I start going out more and more and more or whatever, whatever. So now I start hanging out with this other girl. And I start using drugs. Like, smoking weed? No, meth. You just went straight to meth? No, I started smoking primos with my with my little homies. Tell us what primos are. Yeah. Uh, primos are crack and uh, weed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So how, how do you even roll? How do you even roll that? Cause we've tried, I remember back in the day we tried putting, we used to sell Coke. We would try like sprinkling it onto a blunt, but it wouldn't burn. Cause you probably it, sprinkled too much Coke. I don't but, know, see, but Coke, it didn't do anything to us. But Coke and crack is when you smoke it is completely different. So you how know? do you smoke like, a Primo though? Do you put- Okay, so we will break up the weed and just put a little bit of weed on the on the joint, like on a zigzag. I didn't smoke blunts. Yeah. On the zigzag, and then you know, get a dollar, crush up the rock. Wow. And with the with the key, you know, you just sprinkle mm -hmm. it. So you would go buy a crack rock. Well, we, yeah, we we were on, you know, we were in the block. A fifteen year old girl, a cute little <laughs> sweet, adorable well, Mexican girl. My friends girls. are already like doing their thing. Like selling dope. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So your, so your female friends are already no, like No, my hustling. guy, I didn't really have too many female okay, friends Okay. So like your that. guy friends are, are out there. Yeah. And we're going to school and we live in the same area. So it's like, Hey, you got what? Right. I got, I got, I got, you know, I got the wheat, I got the crack or I got the shavings. You will say shavings. Shavings. Okay. Because we would get it from like the brother and he would just have like a whole sack mm -hmm. and we would just go and pinch it like you right. just go and pinch his brother's shit you take know? the shake yeah take the shake exactly mm -hmm. so we would just have like a hole and we would just get the dirtiest weed yeah because you know like like before like arizona weed was like the good weed like mm -hmm. you know so uh we would Once you take the dirt the mexican bud yeah the mexican mm. bud wow so yeah. that was the fir your first time getting high was a primo no first time getting high was weed but i don't feel like it really affected me like it even did anything to me wow so you got into hard drugs quickly yes so I was, I was, I was in the 10th grade. So you would smoke a Primo crack was, and, and then I, go to school or smoke yes. it at lunch. <laughs> yeah. Or not come back. We would ditch me and my, this one friend of mine. She's still my friend. She's the first time. The first time I went to Juana Hall was with her. She's still my friend. And she's the one that introduced me to fucking meth. That <laughs> okay. So you never forget. You never forget the friend that introduces you to meth. No. <laughs> It wasn't even like, it wasn't even supposed to happen that way. Like now, did you smoke crack rock by itself before no, you got into meth? No, I never smoked crack by itself. I never like free base. Was that a, was that a stigma? Cause by the nineties being a crackhead is already an unacceptable thing in, in hood culture, like yeah. in rap, like oh, base it ass fools. Like exactly. No, like it's not okay. So, so that was, that was still not okay yeah, to you. Like homies will get hooked, hooked on it. And they were like, hide like they wouldn't come out and hang out with us anymore mm. even though we're smoking primos like a gang of us like we'll make like little circles like three of us here three of us here or four or like we'll make little groups you know because wow. one primo is not enough for like mm. 20 people like nah fool if you don't pitch in you ain't smoking <laughs> you know and we will make like little groups like wow. that so the way most high schoolers have blunt sessions Right, where everybody chips in two dollars, uh -huh. you get a you know ten dollar yeah, bag of weed. Yeah, we're for the crack. You're pitching for the crack rock <laughs> for the shavings. <laughs> oh my! God. Yes, That's exactly. Cool. And this is me in continuation school. Like I remember, it's I was going to Highland Park. Continuation is when I used to smoke way more primos. Like mm. that was the era of me smoking primos, yeah. which is in me ninth grade, tenth grade. So okay, so you got kicked out or dropped out of Eagle Rock. The I got kicked out of Eagle quick. Rock High School. I only did like. 
probably half of the ninth grade. Uh, and then I went to Franklin. And th- now we're getting ghetto. Franklin's a little more hood. Exactly. You know, um, now I'm really ditching hardcore, like just ditching, 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 ditching. So um, when I was going to Hiding Park, when I was going to Franklin is when I got in trouble. Like we got arrested uh, for GTA. We stole the pizza man's car and his money. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend. And How'd they, you do how did that? What happened? Oh, we were with these two guys. There's always are some guys, right? Mm. We weren't even on drugs. We like we were sober. We were like, hey, we need to get some money because we were gonna go to a party, like to a party, a party, like one of those house parties or mm. whatever, you know. And um, we go to like uh, Glendale Hills, you know, like how right there, it's like you can't really like. There's only like certain ways to exit, like, sure, the private little yeah. areas or whatever. So we saw Pizza Man and we we got a bag and we're like, give us your money and the car. Oh, and you pretended like you had a gun. Yeah. I mean, we didn't. And then she got on the tri- on the driver's side and I got on the passenger side. And it was like literally burning my f- legs. Like the chopper came. They thought it was like four guys. And it's like literally my friend with his big ass f- hair because she's Puerto Rican and Cuban, right? <laughs> and me, right? If I saw two little 15-year-old girls trying to stick up my pizza route. Well, first of all, what kind of pizza was it? I think it was probably Domino's. Was it right? Domino's? Yeah, or Pizza Hut. Who knows? That's probably Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut's fire, though. Yeah, probably Pizza Hut. Wow. So you, that's so we, some gangster sh- as as two sober chicks? Yeah, we weren't even on drugs or anything. So you And you just needed a ride to the party. Yeah, we just wanted it. We were just bored. Like, wow. like who the f- does that? Yeah, I'll, I'll say. You know? So I'm trying to figure this out. Is is So you got, so they sent the helicopters over? The choppers. We were kind of, it wasn't even a high-speed chase because it, we weren't even on the road for like three minutes, like <laughs> max. She's like, what wow. should I do, right? I was like pull over. I don't know. You know, they put it, get out of the car. You know, they put you down, uh, you know, walk backwards, Wow. you know, like the whole, they really it drew was like down extreme. on you. Yes. Like it was, uh, like you were some real gang members. Yeah. Wow. And keep in mind, I've never gotten in trouble with any of my homies like that. Mm. Besides my, uh, the big federal case, yeah, of course. you know, but other than that, like I've never, like it was always me on my own, doing my own shit. So what, what happened? They sent you to obviously. Okay. So we got arrested. We go to, uh, we go to central juvenile hall, which is East Lake. They take us in. Uh, we were there for like 30 days. Wow. Um, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, no, it was our first time. She was crying the whole time. My friend, right. I always fucking make fun of her still. Uh, she was crying for her mom. And this time, like our parents were able to come visit and bring us our hygiene. Now I don't think they could do that, you know, but, um, it for me, it wasn't like. Oh my God. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, sure. Like it just kind of made me more like, where are you from more? That like, was like a stripe. You, 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 it was more like, because when in the, when you go in, they're always going to ask, well, where are you from? Mm. Like, it's just the and way now it goes. You're like, I'm from Drew street. I'm eh? from Drew street. I'm from, I'm from Drew street avenues. Right. Yeah. But it's just the way it is. And mm-hmm. it's like, from then it just kind of like got more intense and yeah. more intense. Like, so you, now you, I didn't even go home. Well, I, I got out and I went home obviously, but now I didn't hang out with my girlfriends now i was like now you're fully in the yeah, street because i saw the homies in there like yeah. now it was like more like, and all the dudes from the avenues from drew street heard like, that damn, christina negra, got like, locked up yeah, yeah 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 like where does negra come from by the way you're you're my mom okay yeah my mom called me negra so like my homies were like you're negra mm-hmm. yeah it's just what it is yeah know? so they found out negra came home and they were probably patting you on the back like damn dick you know what the f-? like because yeah. we didn't talk like damn homes like now nah, yeah. it was like damn dick like the f- happened you know like think you think you're off who cool know huh like, <laughs> you know like yeah like that and then so you were almost proud of it yeah wow okay so just based on the the area where i lived yeah. right um i was already automatically like part of like the gang right so now the you're gang unit. you're in the system as a gang member because you're from a gang set so yes, actually tell us about the LAPD gang units back then. Was was Crash still around? Crash was around. I had a I had two if you know, you know, like in these years, like in that avenue area, like that area and that those years, like you had Casilius, he was like a gang unit. He was my probation officer. And then you had Tim Brown. Tim Brown was my probation officer as well. He was a gang unit, and this old white man used to walk around with a cane. Like, um, 
just he was just he was mm. just a, like if it was Tim Brown out, yeah. everybody was right. inside because he was gonna put you yeah, away like, if you if you were like violating. I got violated just for being yeah. in my front yard with my neighbor from across the street. Right, right, things like that. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I remember one time I was supposed to be home. I think I was on probation. Obviously, I was supposed to be home like at six. Or five when I wasn't and um, nobody was home, right? But I'm walking and I see Tim Tim Brown and like the gang unit coming out of my house. And there was nobody even there. Like, like wow. nobody, like they just I, let themselves in. Like you're literally going to go look for me because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not home. Mm -hmm. And you're coming out of my house. Yeah. Point is, they waited. I got violated, and I went back to juvenile hall. How long do they send you back when you violated? Uh, I think I only did like three months. That's only. a what are you no, talking about? No, only I think it was like no, like three months. I did. So three you months. did triple the time you actually did yes. for the charge yes. for the crime. Yeah. Wow. So you're out of school. School's done because School's you're you're in jail. Yeah. And then you're getting in trouble and you're going back to jail. Yeah. And and this is also the era where the gang unit would come by. And they put everybody up against the wall. Yeah. There's no, they had no regard for like rights or probable cause. Nothing. And most of the people on Drew Street were probably on paper, everybody. right? Everybody had felonies. Yes. So you couldn't, if you were associating with another felon, that's technically a violation yeah. of your parole. Exactly. But that's just your neighbor. Exactly. Um, so that okay. was like the hardest thing. What to, what was? To be like, to go through that, like to be like, okay, meet me in the back, dick. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to blaze, but we're going to blaze in the back. Like right. we can't go to the front. And mm -hmm. we're like, literally like hey, neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so at this time you smoke meth. Yes. I started. Some, okay. I remember the, the, the beginning first, of a long journey. <laughs> we were at a barbecue. It was like Baja Sundays or something. And, um, they had like the, what's it, what's it called? Chalk butter or something. It's butter or something. It was like the speed. Oh, I don't know this. <sighs> I'm not aware of this. Butter. It's a mix of something? Like it's a mix of meth and no, something it's just, else? It's speed and meth or meth and speed, whatever. I don't know, right. right? But it was like brownish. Okay. And I remember doing the line in the bathroom. Ooh, sounds yummy. I like, I still remember just like feeling hot and it was just like all mm. happy. Right. Way better than crack? Oh yeah. Way <laughs> better than crack <laughs> i was just happy like full of energy mm -hmm. and i'm already i'm an energetic person it's mm. just my it's just how i am yeah. right like i'm just all over the place yeah and we were and i just stopped dancing for like 24 <laughs> hours probably. <laughs> just like that <laughs> nah it was probably like to some deep house or whatever yeah. i don't know but i still remember you know we're hitting the nas and um, the nas tanks yeah since that day like i just i don't think i ever stopped probably using meth but now i used everything so you're smoking. And I'm like 16 years old now. Wow. And uh, are you selling drugs at this point? No. Okay. I don't think I'd sold drugs until I probably after I had my son. Gotcha. So we'll get, we'll move up to that. So you're, you're just, you're, you're on the fast track to no place good. Yeah. Right. You're 16 years old. You're smoking Primos, weed, meth. Everything. Are you, you're, are, do you start smoking meth or started, are you just snorting it? No, I started, well, I started snorting it and then I started smoking it. Mm, yeah. Okay. And you found smoking was a more intense yes. high. Yeah. Were they selling it on Drew street by now at this point? Yes, I believe so. But I didn't really get high with them yet. Why? Cause I was out in the boat, like right. partying with dudes, with right. girls, like, right. You know, once you get into a certain, like when you're in a certain like mode of getting high, like you don't want to just be there or like I'm partying with the girls. We're going, we're doing mm -hmm. things. We're just mm -hmm. not like. So you're, you're from a, what, what are your, what's your mom thinking? What is your father who's not living so with you? My mom, obviously I'm her oldest daughter. Yeah. She's seen me that I'm just like deteriorating. Like just, she's losing me. You know, yeah. I'm in and out of jail literally in and out of jail. She would see my skin and like, tell me like, Hey, you're not okay. Like I would fall asleep with beer in my hand. Like just not okay. Yeah. I would have to, I would be coming home like six in the morning and I got to go to school at eight. Just things she would text. Uh, well, not text me because we didn't have text, right? She would page me. Mm. I wouldn't respond. Like, you know, um, I'm now I'm just hanging out with, you know, just hanging out. 
with yeah. whoever, kind of. Yeah. Not whoever, but you get what I'm saying? Are you like, dating boys? I'm dating boys, even older ones. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Wow, what a shock. Uh, older. Isn't it, it so crazy how like now, this is something that- uh, It's so taboo now. Like now it's like- But back then it was probably pretty normal for a pretty 16-year-old to be dating a 24-year-old with a low rider, you know? Yes. And then was it kind of like that? It was kind of like that. Oh, wow. And were they fueling your drug habit? Were you we also would just partying with them? just get high together or yeah. like things like that, you know, like- Yeah. We and the girls will go party in different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Like obviously not in my area, but like mm -hmm. far with other dudes, you know? Right. Like, and you were probably, you were growing up too fast. You're probably making yourself up to look like you're 21. Yeah. Cause right? she went on this yesterday. My friend sent me a picture of you're myself. You're like every girl in, you're like the Cholas <laughs> in training day. You know what I mean? <laughs> He was like a white boy. <laughs> they were like trying to rape me and shit. It was kind of like colors, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at me, Pac Man. <laughs> I'm a homegirl too, man. <laughs> Yo, go in. Go in. Yeah. You know, like it was just kind of like that. I always, but I always try to look my best. Like I didn't look like a game member. I didn't look, I just looked normal girl to me at least mm. i was always nice and clean i always had the best shit what you know? was meth doing to your skin no i would i would take care of myself more yeah right i didn't pick right it's a lot of people pick yeah. when they're on meth did you have tats no nope. yeah so you didn't look like you were affiliated no um maybe my thug passion that's on how your, my on your stomach yeah <laughs> um uh, maybe that. i got that when i was 16 right 16 yeah. And um, I thought I was all cool because all the homies were there, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. You guys, it's football season. And if you like firing on action every Sunday, you got to head over to prize picks, okay? If you're kind of a half a fruit like me and you don't really love sports, but you want to put a little bit of money down and make double, triple, sometimes 25X your money, plus stay engaged in the game. I know when I am watching sports, I'm way more engaged when I got a little skin in it, right? When I got something to gain. That's why prize picks has you covered. Okay. Prize picks is really simple to play and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And you don't have to be an expert. It's a daily fantasy game where you're just trying to beat the prize picks projections. Okay. You're not playing against any big experts or sharks. It is the perfect way for the lay person or the casual sports fan to put their knowledge to use and get a little skin, double up, make your fucking money. That's what we're about here on The Connect, okay? And check this out. If you go to prizepix.com slash connect and use promo code connect, prizepix will match your first $100 deposit, okay? Again, go to prizepix.com slash connect and use code connect for a first deposit match up to $100. You guys are going to love it. Let's get back into the episode. Do you feel like your choice in men, and, and not just you, but many, many ladies from that era and that environment, you know, even we were talking off pod, like your younger girlfriends that go for like, uh, you know, these, these troubled men, you know, do you think that's comes from your father? Like, are you, were you mad at your father? It's gotta be a daddy issues thing, right? I mean, I definitely, I definitely have daddy issues. Yeah. But do you think, do you think you go for guys that are like your dad or the opposite of your dad? Um, I think the opposite. Mm. Cause your dad was a, yeah, had his my shit dad, together, you know? Yeah, yeah, my dad's always been a hardworking man. Yeah, like he had, a, my he had dad, a passport, he had a good job. Yeah. Yeah, he's always had. A, he's always been a hardworking man. Um, I think it was just my addiction, to be honest. Mm. And I liked a certain look. What'd you like? I like the look? bald and tattoos. Ah. I like the bald and tattoos. Mm. You gotta have clean shoes, you know? Like, if you don't have clean shoes, I'm not with you. You better have a pair of dickies and some suspenders mm. keeping those dickies up. No, <laughs> you gotta have your 501s. Nice white shoes and right. white t-shirt. Right. Know? And you like the bald man, the bald. which God, real bald guys, not guys who shave. They would appreciate that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. The ones that shave. You like the ones that shave? Was, were wife beaters still in, in 1998? Yeah, but I don't think they walked around like- They didn't walk white, around now, like that. Like now it's kind of like a, you know, they've always wore wife beaters, mm -hmm. I feel. Mm -hmm. So you were just into that look. Yeah. You I were like into the life. You're into the look. When did you meet your baby daddy? I met him at- 18 years old. So what happens between 16 and 18? I'm just on meth running a muck. <laughs> I doesn't like, I'm just on meth, like chilling. Mm -hmm. 
doing whatever. I wouldn't call it chilling. I was chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I was living my best life. Okay, great. I uh, no, 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 no. You're, that was not your best life. You're doing much better now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying at that time, that's what I wanted to be doing. Like right. everything I did is because that's what I wanted. Yeah. That was my choice. Mm. So uh, to me, I feel like I was living my best life. That was mm. my best life. Cause that's what I wanted to do. Mm. Not mm. because I was thrown out there because, oh my God, I want to mm. go to the streets because my family's up no. or because I got to follow my family to do mm -hmm. what my family is doing. No, mm -hmm. I was just like that because that's what I wanted. And meth is, n is that a stereotype yet? Like the way it is now, or was, was that something that was taboo? I guess the way crack was, I think everybody was getting high on meth. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because it started in, in 2008. That's everybody was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I talked to the Mexicans when I was locked up, you know, and they're like, yeah, I mean, we move way more Cristal than we move Coke. So and it really like started to take over yeah. that market. Uh, but, but, you know, now it's known for being like in rural white trash America. Yeah. But like, back in the nineties, it, it was, it was an inner city thing. This is fascinating, you know, but it wasn't in black neighborhoods though. No, it really was. Now in, it is. I feel I probably is a little more. Yeah. Yeah. But it was started, but it was in Latino yeah. communities yeah. from, from back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, now you're 18. Tell us about your son's father. Okay, so my son's father, I met him um, through another friend of mine. Um, it was her, it was my friend's stepmom's nephew. Mm. <laughs> and um, he was just fresh out of YA, which is California Youth Authority, mm -hmm. right? For was, what? He did juvenile life for, I don't know, I don't even. Juvenile don't, life? Yeah. What is that? Means you got to be in there your whole juvenile. Yeah, I think he got out when he was like 22. Then he went in when he was like 14 or 16 or something like that. Um, so I met him when he first, first got out because he paroled to that house. Mm. You know, me, you know, he he's bald. You know, he's fresh out. He has he's like Honduran a, though, right? Yes, he's Honduran. Not Mexican. Not Mexican. Are Honduran men, how are they different from Mexicans? I know there's a huge difference, but what is it? <laughs> Maybe just the way they sound. They just have a different accent. Yeah. Okay. Like Latins are fucking Latins. Mm. <laughs> all, to me, men all kind of have the same. You're a macho man. You're a macho man. Yeah. It's just human nature. Oh, uh, okay. That doesn't mean that it's okay. What? Being a macho man. Honduran? You know? It's not okay being Honduran? No, I, no. I mean, my sons have Honduran. Uh, of course it's okay, you know? He's a Latino. You're a Latin. You yeah. Know? So we just started hanging out. Just going out. He had his job. He's always been a hard worker as well. Mm. My son's father. Um, but we would smoke primos together too. Yeah. And he's from Hollywood. So we would just, I would just go and party with him, you know, cause that's now he's my boyfriend. And we start doing stupid shit together. Like, mm. you know, I remember I got a, I got a case. Robbery, uh, a robbery or burglary or robbery. They charged it probably as burglary because it was like a certain amount you know like when you you mm -hmm. you get charged more yeah. and we were you know what i was stealing oh my god <laughs> oh don't tell me don't tell me you stole a pizza and now it's i don't know some tacos <laughs> <laughs> no so we had a stroller covered it like we had baby formula really well that's a hot item to shoplift though why were you stealing that because we were selling it of course of course we're making a killing really Tell a me fucking about baby this. Baby formula, in Orange County. I got a case. Really? So you, where, you would steal baby formula? From like all those grocery stores. Right. Just shoplift it. Yeah. And then you would go sell it where? To a certain person. Like a fence. They call that a fence. Oh, I, I don't know. It's just this dude I already kind of had. And then he would break it down and sell it on the street? Yeah. He would just give me a certain. <laughs> Tell me that's not crazy. Like, what that's the fuck? That's wild. That's wild. That's, so you guys were like the wholesalers and you sold it to a guy and he broke yeah. it down into rocks. And sold that yeah, shit, however, shit out retail. Yeah. Wow, cool. How Keep much? Can mind, you... I'm still on meth, but not like I'm. I'm still. I'm on meth this whole time. Yeah, still. What What could you sell uh, baby formula for at wholesale? Like a bulk baby formula. What do you get for it? I don't know. I think maybe like maybe like two three hundred dollars per run. Okay. For each store, not per run. Oh yeah, yeah, per, yeah, yeah, per yeah. run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah, I think. Cause I don't, I don't remember. You, you know, know what's I'm, wild is that if you did that now, it would be like a misdemeanor. You could just shoplift. If it's like under $900, you could just, yeah, they probably wouldn't even arrest you. Yeah. Well, I don't want to shoplift. 
No, no, no. I'm just saying like, that's <laughs> how crazy, that's how things have changed. Yeah. You know, they've shifted. So I was on probation for that too. Like I literally got off the day before from Holly Steele, the juvenile cases. Right, right. I was off. And then like maybe a month later, I'm back on probation for that damn, I'm yeah. not pregnant yet or anything, you know? Yeah. And then I get pregnant and um, I stopped using drugs from that minute I found out I was pregnant. Wow. And you were able to stop like that? Yeah. And I was living in Pomona with my dad at this time. I was okay. going to cosmetology school. I always try to like be okay, mm -hmm. no matter what. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, at least I thought I was always trying to be mm -hmm. okay, even though I was a mess. Mm -hmm. Like I was a disaster. You know, I would, I just, whatever, smoking, mm -hmm. meth. Yeah. So, some but fucking you, motel or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. yeah. I guess if you're going to smoke meth, you just go all the way. Do it in some dirty travel lodge, you know? <laughs> like, just, oh, like, what the? Yeah. You know? How much would you smoke in, like, a night? Um, If it was a good, you got 300 bucks from selling baby formula. Uh, I don't even know. Maybe, like, a little teener or whatever it was called. Mm. Like, 80 bucks or something. Mm. But keep in mind, it was, like, the drugs were so much cleaner before. Mm. At least that was a little cleaner than the way it is now. Way cleaner. Yeah. And then I used to have like this trick, right? At least <laughs> I used to have this trick. You know, you put the you put the meth and the, the crystals inside the pookie or whatever, right? Uh -huh. And uh, you burn it. But I would put like a the lighter on top <sighs> and blow uh -huh. to get all the nastiness. I would be if it. Oh, that's how I would see if it. Was, it. Yeah. yeah, like where the f did I even learn <laughs> this shit? <laughs> no meth heads. <laughs> Methods and crackheads, you guys are handy. You guys, and thank God I still have my teeth, right? Yes, oh, you got beautiful teeth, beautiful teeth. Yeah, you you quit just before you got meth face. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I feel like people that use drugs. I know a lot of comedians that that use drugs for years, and some quit, but it was too late, and they got meth mouth. Oh. You know, meth mouth, it never leaves you. No. It <laughs> Every time I go to the dentist, I'm like, I'm sorry, you know, I smoke meth. And they just laugh. <laughs> like, who does that? You're such just, an open book. I am so open. I'm just, you know what? I'm just so comfortable with who I am now. Mm. I'm grown woman. I'm not that same person. No. And if you want to judge me for my past, I'm sorry. I won't see you in heaven <laughs> for being judgmental. Wow. And that's how I feel. Wow. You think you're going to heaven? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, that <laughs> no, you're, you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, you know. I'll see you in hell then. God is good to me. Uh, okay, so so you're 18. You find out you're pregnant. And this uh, is around the time that I think you go back to Drew Street and start selling dope. Yes. Okay, could you well, tell no, us? Well, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay, but tell us about how that all so, happened. So um, I get pregnant and I move back to my mom's house, which is on Andrita Street. Still the area, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just have the next block. Yep. Um. Keep in mind, like, I, these guys have always been my friends. They're my, my homies. They're my mm. homies. Like, I'm in a relationship now. They know my baby's dad. Mm. Like, they would, we would smoke together. Like, mm. certain ones, obviously, you know? Because he's from a different gang, and he's mm. living there. Okay. But, oh, yeah. So, your baby daddy's back there. My baby daddy's living with me. Okay. He's from a different gang. And it's cool, because he's, he was a, he's, mm -hmm. he's not, like, it's not an enemy. Like, yeah. he's worked. He's mm -hmm. always worked. I think I traded those. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, um. That was that. So I have the baby. We um, move to Vegas. Okay. Um, we move to Vegas. I'm still on. I get back on meth the same week that we move to Vegas. Yeah, you're just waiting to have that kid. Yes, I get mm. right back. Right. Um, I had a boyfriend, my teenage boyfriend, which is he's from you know mm -hmm. he's from he's from the hood. Yeah. And he was my boyfriend for like since we were like 16, 18, 19. Like, you know, he was my boyfriend, boyfriend. Like we lived together as we were teenagers, like, like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's in, he goes to jail and I get pregnant on him. Mm -hmm. Right. So he gets out when I moved to Vegas. So I'm taking, I'm coming, I'm taking my trips because I'm getting, I don't know if I should say this because what if I get in trouble? <laughs> I'm getting, you know, I'm getting help from the government. So I come once a month to get mm -hmm. my, to get my money. Right. Right. Sure. And once a month I'm coming, but he's already out and I'm already seeing him. Mm. He's back in the neighborhood. He's back he's, on. Oh no, yeah. Street? He's back. He's back. Okay. And, um, I already have the baby. So, and I'm on meth and he's on meth. Okay. The guy. Right. Yeah. And, um, I just stay longer, longer, right. Longer. I, 
then by that time, like my husband, my baby's dad and I are fighting, like, yeah, because I'm not okay. Mm -mm. I am not okay, mm. right? Um, so I leave him and I come back home with the kid, you with got my your son? son, yeah, okay. um, with my son, and um, he comes down to try to. He asked me to marry him, blah blah blah. Obviously, that didn't happen, right? Like, why do you want to come and be with this person that's a disaster? Mm. That's not okay. But he's not okay either. My son's mm. father, he's on drugs as well yeah. now. You know? And um, now I'm just with this, with you know, with, and now I'm being with my son's father mm -hmm. and with him. Mm -hmm. And this guy is like, now he has another girlfriend. I'm like going crazy on him. Like both. Like it's just a mess, right? And I'm just a mess really, really bad mm -hmm. and obviously i break up with my son's father the guy goes back to jail and um i'm still doing my shit like now i'm just now i'm like oh shit what am i doing i need to get my shit now i'm now, now I, you gotta get money yeah so now i'm need to get money i need to get high i need to now i have to pay my mom mm -hmm. moved out mm -hmm. so i have to pay the apartment so yeah so you're in, in that neighborhood the avenues uh glassell park back then it was just dope houses it was crack houses, Everywhere. meth houses, people on the corner. Everywhere. Like there was like a, on each corner, like there's like five, five, up, you know, there's houses in between the apartments that right. have that, that sell as well. It was just. And what was the traffic like? People buying. 24 seven. Cars coming 24 in. 24 seven. And you know, I five is right there, and and the one thirty four. I think you the, can just get or the what is it? The two ten. The two freeway. Yeah. It's the two. So the two, the two ten or one thirty four, and then the five. Who was coming up from? Who was buying? Do you a remember? lot of Armenians, a lot of black people. Wow. Yeah. Coming to buy crack. Yeah. Wow. Who was Mainly buying crack? Who was buying meth back then? Besides the Latinos. Um. Russians. Russians. Wow. Was Bites. there something about that little strip? But mainly just crack. Yeah. Okay. So it was mainly just crack. Yeah. That was it was like certain sold. ones that right. were using meth, but mainly crack. I feel. Was there something about that particular pocket that made that a hot area to come buy drugs? Well, yeah, because they've been since selling drugs in that street since the early or late eighties. Right. So that was known as like the crack spot. People will go up from everywhere. And it's tiny it's too. So you can see street. everybody that's coming up. It's a yes. good strategic place for dope dealers yeah. because it's essentially a dead end at the very, it's, there's a cemetery at the end yes. of the block. And so it's really easy to spot cops probably yeah. coming up the you, way especially too. When, you know, you start, you start knowing the, the, how they sound, mm -hmm. the way the lights look, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. certain things. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you just know. Yeah. Wow. So it's just a, it's just a hive of drug activity. A lot. So how did you get into the game then? Um, just like, hey, I want to do my shit too. Did Who'd you go to? Like the older homie? Well, I know. I just got my own shit. And then- so did you open up shop in your, your Well, I apartment? was my own person. That's what I mean, though. No, but, I didn't sell inside of my house. I would just go outside. So, but you started off selling crack? Yeah, I only crack. I only sold crack. Did you buy it already cooked up? No, I would cook it myself. You knew how to cook crack? Yes. Did you have to have an older homie teach you how to do it? I only saw one person do it one time, and that was it. And yeah. I would do it in the microwave. Wow. So you were a visual learner. Yes. So you, who, who would hit you off with powder? Uh, he actually just passed away and he rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Did he, uh, and it was that, it was a Mexican guy mm -hmm. from the neighborhood. He wasn't from the gang, but he was a paisa. Can I ask you a paisa? What is, when you say paisa, what does that mean? What's He's the distinction? Mexican. He doesn't, he doesn't go as in like an essay or a, yeah. Homie. He's not a Chicano. He's not a first. No. He's not a first he generation. He, he wasn't was, born here. He was born in Mexico. Right. Speak Spanish only. Right. So did you, was there one main Paisa who distributed powder to all of the other Chicano crack dealers or did they all have their own plugs? Well, if you could, if, if, if it was easier for you to go through him, cause he's there. Yes. But mm -hmm. mainly, you know, if you, uh, pay a certain amount, then it doesn't matter what you do because you're paying sell drugs. All right. How much did you, how much would you pick up from your paisa? Not even that much. Honestly, maybe like a, like a cookie. What was a cookie? Like, an ounce? Uh, no, maybe like a, no, more than that. What's more than an eight ball? More than an eight ball yeah. is a half ounce. Yes. Okay. And then I would just cook it and I would shave it Uh huh. because it would be like, you know, thick. Yeah. I would shave it and recook it and shave it again 
and we cook it. Well, look at it. You're a good Latina in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> and it was just like small. It wasn't like rocks. It was just like small little dimes. You and that's I just, would just I would just sell dimes. And that's just one a one hitter basically. Nah, more. You could smoke a primo. Wow. Wow. So how and how long would that take you to sell? Oh, like did you have a good recipe? Was like was it strong? Did crackheads like it? Yeah. It just depends on who, how the badge of was. Right. His right. badge. But yeah. most of the time it was good. Wow. But kind of almost all of us had the same kind of little the same Mm-hmm. shit mm-hmm. we just all posted like we were all in different places like you wanted to be up, up the block i would just stay in my front yard or like you know it just depends if i go to if i go to the block there's like four of us there um we'll take turns like who was there first wow really like oh you were here first okay one you second so you're like, like the that. mexican laborers at home depot standing around they're like they're standing in line waiting for, for you know customer. somebody to pull up yeah wow and is it females like you it wasn't really that many females so you were, you were just there with other men, men posted up with crack. Yeah. Ready Maybe to like serve. Maybe like one or two here and there, girls, but no. What were your shifts like? Whatever time you got there, it's on you. When did you go though? When, uh, when was your busiest hours? At night when I had my sister to watch my son. Wow. How much would you make in a shift? Not that much. It just depends on me. Because remember, I'm a meth head too now. Yeah. So... I'm smoke. I'm buying meth as well. Mm-hmm. So it would come home with like three, four, three, four hundred dollars max. How long would that take you? Uh, maybe like two days, a day. So Just depends yeah. on the night, right? Or on me. Yeah. So that's about so four hundred dollars. Uh, that's forty sales. Yeah. Which back then, that's enough to get you fed time. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Especially with the crack laws exactly. back then. So. That is pretty wild that an 18 year old girl. And it's like girl- all of us. No, at this time, when I, uh, this time, I'm already like um, 23. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So you're a grown ass woman, by the way. Yeah, then. I'm already. Could be a grandma. No. I'm joking. <laughs> no, gross. <laughs> I still don't want to be a grandma. Um, well, yeah, I'm not ready for it. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll grow into it. You'll get ready, you know. <laughs> yeah. Your son doesn't have kids? Your oldest no. son? No. My son is. Not even like, um, oh, well, I mean, he does have, a, he's had a girlfriend, mm-hmm. but like right now he's just like not caring for girls. He's yeah. just working and just Good. doing his thing. Good. Good. Girls are gross. Focus on what's yeah. important. If you yeah. have a girlfriend, cool. You know, I would mm-hmm. love for him to have a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. It's just, just whatever happens, happens. You know, he's a good boy. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to be selling crack. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely so, not. So uh, this is, so um, was there competition at all on Drew Street amongst the dope dealers? Always. But I mean. Because there's some that are the bigger ones. Yeah. That everybody goes to theirs. Yeah. So it's like, it just depends. But there were there ever sh- like shootouts? Like if somebody on the street was no, getting money. You can't do that. Everybody, Okay. No. Hey, tell us about that. What were the rules around? Well, I mean, you just got to take turns. You can't. Side bust. And so everybody was kind of cooperating. Unless they go to you personally. Right. Like, right, right. Or but, it's like, you're the, you're the man, you're the, oh, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. But even if it was at a certain house, there's still at least one or two people there. Yeah. That they're still taking turns. So, so everybody. Like so much money. Everybody on this street was like cooperating mm-hmm. in this, in crack selling. Wow. That's and, and, and I know when we were filming, you told me like you saw some people get shot or you heard people getting shot in the street. Yeah. What was that over then? It's just a random walking, not walking. Like, a, you know, where one of the guys was outside and he's not, he wasn't even from the gang. He just lived there. Yeah. You know, uh, somebody was driving and got off and shot. Wow. Over what? Just, he didn't say anything or anything, but you know, it's could it could have been somebody else like an enemy or whatever, right. you know, just, and just mistaken identity yeah. shot the wrong person. Yeah. That's that. You know, Wow. did that happen pretty frequently? No, not really. Honestly. Yeah. Cause it was such a tight block. It was such a tight block. You couldn't get outsiders really in at all. Cause you could see the op it coming in. It was so in. different. Yeah. Like it was different. Like, you know, you would have people in different areas, like corners, like, Hey, like looking out. On the chirp. Did you have the chirp in the chirp? Yeah, the, like, the walkie talkies. Hey, you, you know, the whole. So the little next cell phones? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So did you have lookouts like that? Yeah. Or wow. we're just outside and we're like, hey, we've seen this car, or like things like that. Wow. But, or the cops, mainly for the cops. We weren't really, yeah. we weren't really too threatened, honestly, by 
other people. Because you guys are so deep. Yeah. Uh, do you remember raids before your case came down? Do you remember the cops rolling up uh, during raids on crack houses? Not really, to be honest. Mm. Like, I, I don't really remember it like that, to be honest. Maybe just the cops getting the guys. It was more about the guys, the cops getting the gang members. Right. So they weren't there for the drugs. Obviously, yes. Well, what, do you, what did you throw? You're looking at home. Right. Trying to, you know, always trying to find something. Obviously, but, it, but, but it was still the gang unit mostly that was coming the up gang in there. Unit. Always right. the gang unit. It was more about the gang members. All right. So were you even thinking about feds at this point? I never even thought about the feds. You weren't because you were like, I'm just looking out for LAPD. I'm yes. just looking out for LAPD. And look, it got to the point. This was like 2000 and the early 2008. Um, we would have like undercovers, um, like post up, like maybe like 10 of them and pretend to be gang members. Really? They would pretend. Obviously, we knew who they were. Like, okay. Here's so they the didn't fool you at all? No, of course not. We don't know these people. They don't look like any of us. Like, they're not our friends. Were they Latinos? Yes. Latinos and whites. Like, they would, you know, like put the bandana all the way. Like, who the, we don't wear that shit. We didn't <laughs> In it's the early 1988, 90s, yeah. we're in 2008, 2006, <laughs> yeah, like right. shit's different, you know, yeah. like it's not, you're not wearing yeah. that food. Like, what are you doing? You know, so we, we already know. Mm -hmm. So they would uh, bust, they would sell, they would bust the smokers and ask them, who is this person? Who is this person? Oh, so they were doing reverse busts. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. And that's how they would get information from them. Right. From them. And smokers. Yeah, they knew us. The smokers knew us. They were like our yeah, buddies. Like there are certain ones that we want. Oh, hey, I wonder when this fool's coming. Or like. Right. Hey, and crackheads will always snitch because they're so desperate to get out of jail, to get high, uh -huh. that they'll they'll give it all the game up. Yeah. Okay. So what? how does that progress? And how? tell us how that progressed into a Fed case. Well, I don't know how it progressed. I just know that I would like for a whole month. I would get pulled. I got pulled over almost every single day. Coming home? Just driving. I didn't work or anything. Just driving. And I didn't find anything. I didn't have anything. They would just just see. Who would pull you over? Just cops. Marked cops? Just like, cops. Like regular cops. Regular cops? Yeah. And I would got a ticket for like speeding, for the exhaust. Like just. Would, would, they, would they search your car? They would search my car. And I had weed. Like I would have like a joint lit there. Yeah. Like I wouldn't get a ticket for any just for like stupid shit. And, and with, it did, were you on, and you had felonies by now, obviously. Yeah. Uh, were you on parole while you were- I was on were, probation. So you- They still wouldn't even take me in. So it's like, like what the Strange. Fuck? Very strange. Super strange. Mm. Super strange. And were you paranoid? Because you're also getting high. You're still a meth head. Yes. So did yes. you start to get paranoid? Uh, I was just like, fuck, I would, I would just see them. And I'm like, I already have like the tickets in my hand. Like I already got pulled over for this shit, fool. Like, what is your problem? Mm. I was not like fighting it or like, what the fuck? Like- yeah. I've never been that kind of, but they were searching your car. Yeah, like they like, knew they were, were I think they were just trying to like pick, mm. you know? Okay. And, um, yep. In 2008, I believe it was in June. Um, I, it was like four in the morning. My two guy friends just left. We were eating, we were watching the 50 cent movie. Get rich or die. Trying. Yes. It's about on this the whole time. The, Feds were in the house. You know how the DVDs at first, like it has like the DVDs, you have to push play or whatever, mm -hmm. like, but it was always like a song playing. Mm -hmm. And it was like the 50 cent song, like, um, America got a thing for this gangster shit. They love me. I, it was a song. Yeah. And it was just playing the whole time. I just remember this shit, you know? Yeah. So, anyways, my guy friends left and we were just eating cake and watching the movie, right? I'm on meth, but they're smoking weed. <laughs> they didn't, we didn't, weren't meth heads, you know? Yeah. And um, as soon as I left, I hear like a boom, 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 boom. Mind you, I live in the second floor. So I look outside my window and I see like smoke. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Literally, I look and I'm running back and from like my door to the window and I just see cars like going really, really slow. Streaming. So and I'm just like, oh, shit. And then I hear like, Going up my stairs. Doom, doom. Boom, boom, boom. You heard the boots. Because I, I live on the second floor. They, you know, they didn't break down my door. They knocked. Mm. They're, they're nice. They're mm. very nice gentlemen. I'm not mm. going to say they were mean or anything. Um, they knocked and they asked, hey, are you Miss Cruz? I sure am, you know? Mm. I already knew what time it was just because, I mean, they're at my house, you know? All I cared was that my son was okay. 
He was in the apartment he with was you? in the apartment. And I still remember his little face. He was like super nervous. Like he was five. Mom, is my mommy going to be okay? And they're like, yes. Um, they allowed for me to call my mom. Hold on. So who, who was there? The DEA? The EA and ATF. Wow. Yeah. Looking for guns. Looking for guns. Did you ever have a gun? I didn't have anything on me. But you didn't have anything on you, but did you carry one in your your line of work? Mm, yes and no. Not really. Okay. I didn't need to. I could have really f***ing carry my pants. Yeah. A f twig, you know wow. what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're sucked <laughs> up. You're I'm smoked the f*** out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I am like mm. a stick, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And- um. So they bring you downtown? They bring No, they didn't bring me downtown. They took us to- uh, So when they were taking- raiding my house they were raiding like 70 other people's houses at the same time or maybe not 70 people but there were 75 people in my case whoa so this was a whole it was this was like a whole this was a whole indictment a whole indictment it's like 75 of us stringing were, you guys all together we're raiding everybody's getting raided at the same time wow one of my guy one of my homies he lived right across the street from me like me and him were both in the paddy wagon together. And it was literally like the paddy wagon, like, you know, the little trucks with open the door in the yep, back. Like, yep. so I get in there and he's already in there. Now tell us when you were getting, when you were handcuffed and getting walked outside, what did the block look like? Was like it just, just packed with cars? Just packed with cars. All feds. Squat, uh, squat, squat, like. Wow. So it was still so smoky, like just. So they were raiding houses. They probably shot the smoke. Uh-huh. They were getting like. Every, it was like boom, 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 all over. Mostly men? Mostly men. Any Maybe other, like any other girls? girls or so? Okay. Yeah. Wow. So tell us about your case then. How do they, because I'm very fascinated by these federal cases. They, they took all of these basically freelance dope dealers, but you guys were from a gang. Yes. Was that the way they were able to call it organized crime? Yes. Because you all claim to be from- A certain gang. And what, what was that gang called? Avenues. Avenues. Yeah. That was a gang. So that's the way that they were able to elevate it- Into the RICO, yeah. Into a RICO case. Yes. Wow. And when you saw that paperwork- I, didn't, I still didn't know. What do you mean? I didn't know. What, I still didn't know what was happening. Right, right. Like, I didn't know what- I mean, obviously, I know I'm- going I'm getting arrested, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm in my pajamas. I have my Dodger jacket. I thought I was, I still was like, can I get my jacket? I, uh -huh. You know, I'm going to be cold, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we go to the Dodger Stadium. They had like a whole camp. Oh the, my God, this is the, huge. The Dodger Stadium parking. Whoa. Like they had like, maybe like five sheriff buses. Like, wow. why do you need five? Well, 70 people, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. They make spectacles. Was the news there? I don't know. They I mean, make spectacles out of like, these things. Every every couple of years, I've noticed even in today's day and age, every couple of years, they'll see you'll see these gigantic roundups of different, usually Chicano gangs, mm -hmm. and they'll lay, they'll rent like city blocks yeah. in downtown LA to to post up and all of the there, vehicles yeah. and bring because it's like a hundred hundreds of people yeah. sometimes in these Rico cases. It was a lot. Wow. Yeah. So we get to the Dodger Stadium and I'm like What's that, like, what am I getting charged for? And they're like, you are getting uh, Rico indicted. You're, you know, you're I'm like, what the fuck is a Rico? Mm -hmm. <laughs> fuck, uh, <laughs> who the fuck is the Rico? You hooked you know? up with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some Puerto Rican ass fool, you know? <laughs> no offense my Puerto Rican, I'm just saying Rico, you know? Um, so yeah, and they were like, so that's that. Like, we're there. Uh, they sent, they shipped me first to Santa Ana County. Mm-hmm. And um, I was there for like a week. Um, I basically so females don't have to wait in the tombs downtown with everybody else, like the M MCC? Yes. Yeah, some girls went there. No really girls. I think only like two girls went to the there. Okay. But I think it was like five of us that went to Santa Ana. Mm, okay. The girls, mainly the girls. Guys went to Santa Ana too, but the guys were so much that they went everywhere. Yeah. You know, San Bernardino, uh, West Valley or mm. whatever the f mm. at MDC. But majority of them were at MDC. Yeah. So I'm in Santa Ana. I'm most of the days, the first days I just slept. Yeah. I didn't know anything. I mean, I don't. And I just, you're exhausted because you've been on your meth high and for now centuries. And, and so you just, you crash. I'm just sleeping. Yeah. Um, I see my lawyer and um, he asked for me to get housed at MDC. Mm -hmm. So permanently housed so that I'm not able to get it moved anywhere else. Right. So I could be close to home. That's right. my main thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody, all the guys and everybody was, other guys were at MDC. Mm -hmm. So um, I get shipped to MDC. I get there. This is completely different from Santa Ana. 
Santa Ana is just kind of like a little uh, like a jail. Like a little jail, you know, it's just it was just I mean, not that MDC was all big or anything, but it was just completely different. And everybody there is waiting on fighting fed cases. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And um I get there and as soon as I walked into the Nine North, that's where they house the girls, which is mm -hmm. the, the last floor. Mm -hmm. Um, it's Nine North, that's where they have the girls. I get there and as soon as I walk in, they're like, Hey, you're negative. Like your homies are waiting for you. Like mm -hmm. they already knew that I was getting transferred. Yeah. However, I don't know. Wild. I, they just knew. I don't know how they know all that, but they do. Um, so I get there and they're like, Oh, you're negative. Hey, you're you're negative. Your homies want to talk to you. And I'm like, my homies want to talk to me. I have no idea. Like, what do you mean they want to talk to me? Like, now oh, yeah, go to this room and and scream on the vent, like mm -hmm. six north or mm -hmm. seven north, because mm -hmm. they could hear you on the vent. Mm -hmm. So I get there and I'm like, hey, it's Negra, whatever they're calling me. They're like, okay, hey, I just want to let you guys know that I'm here, or like, hey, we know you got here, blah, blah, blah. If you need anything, let us know. Mm -hmm. Just like wow. that. Wow. I got into my room and MDC was something else. Yeah. It was a trip it was cool like not like that but you're obviously doing time right and it's like oh you're i'm in this big ass case there's girls and there's the guys are all downstairs mm -hmm. everybody's all like ah, mm -hmm. the girls the guys right. oh, i'm talking to this guy i'm talking to this guy like yeah, everybody has yeah. a boyfriend you're and in a relationship <laughs> in jail <laughs> i love those <laughs> it's like an old school sex sex line you know you just talk dirty through the vents well I, you know i had one but i didn't talk dirty to be honest i had two boyfriends right in there two, in the mdc two and a half Two and God, a half you were always playing around. You always were. You're a little player, dude. I was. That's what you are. Now, would you? Well, my last boyfriend had kept them the whole term. Your last boyfriend? Whole... Oh, you kept him your whole stretch. My, my whole my my oh, wow. my boyfriend that I found at MDC. Yeah, we were in the relationship my whole term. Like writing each other every day, talking to each other, wow. three way messages, wow. emails. Like, how do you email from prison? Well, because you know we have. Uh, now we have like email. So we have computers oh. that you're able to inmate your uh, email, your family. So I would email his mom, his mom will copy and paste and she will send it to each other. Right. Like I, sh I she will send me his messages and I yeah. would, she would send my messages. Could you him. get nudes out to him? No. That, that How the fuck do you even take nudes though? I don't know. I didn't have a cell phone. Like it wasn't like that. Yeah. Okay. At all. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I always found that cruel when I was locked up they would confiscate the nude photos that the chicks would send into the dudes. I'm like, do you want us to, there's so much stabbing already Yeah, you like, want to kill each other even right? more. Like, at least I don't release the damn stress. Yeah. Seriously. Get, <laughs> tell them to quit offering to me, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Shit. I can't take it anymore. So, uh, yeah. MDC was completely like people would, uh, we would fish with mm -hmm. the guys through the toilet. Okay. Tell us. Tell okay. Us. So, uh, this I thought it was, was like so crazy. So depending on the floor that you that mm -hmm. you, you know, obviously the girls on the ninth floor and you depends on what floor the guys of eight north or seven north. Mm -hmm. We would get a sheet and you would slice them like do lines. Yeah, do lines, right? You know about that and tie them up. Yeah, we definitely know about doing lines, guys. <laughs> we would tie the sheets up so make them long, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's the that's one side, and then you would tie like. The laundry bag has like a net looking thing. You'll cut it and tie it to the big old line of sheet, right? The other person that you're fishing with will have the hook, meaning they'll do like a braid. And, and you know, on each battery, if you open the battery up, it's a nail in there. Oh. So you will make a braid and pull like maybe like 13 uh, nails. Right. Inside the line. So then I flush and they flush and they would try to hook. Oh, I have the course. hook and he has the, right. I have the line and he has a hook. So yeah. we try to hook each other. Right. And then we would connect. Bam. Right. And then he pulls it down. We'll, we'll be connected. He has his oh, side and right. I have my side, but we're still connected. Right. So then I would pull his line up or however, and we would send like food, letters, alcohol through the bag through the plumbing through the, the toilet plumbing. but we would wrap it like let's just say you're in, in the shoe there's guys that live in the shoe right yeah. they don't eat real food like that like so the girls will make burritos and we will wrap them really 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 good like wrap them with yeah. saran wrap like yeah. really really yeah, yeah, really yeah. well 
and then we'll wrap it with a sheet really, yeah. really well. And then we tie it up like a tamal. Yeah. <laughs> like a tamal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a tamal. You wrap them and then send it down. Wow. Like, flush, I'm sending it down. Wow. Because all the plumbing is connected. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right? Like, I never fished. I know people did it in there. I was too busy, you know, whatever, think about what I was going to do when I got out of prison. But uh, that's fascinating. That's crazy. That's crazy. Now, when you were locked up at MDC, everybody's fighting their case. Did you have bail? No bail. So they didn't even give you a number? No bail. Why not? Because I had a fair, I was on probation. I had well, of course. A probation so, hold. Oh, when you have, when you're on probation, you catch a case, yeah. you automatically get a, a no bail. Hold. Yeah. Um, were, tell us about the other people involved in your case. What were the charges? Uh, it's all a big Rico conspiracy yes. charge. Well, I, my charges were conspiracy to racketeering and distribution of crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. Those were my charges. Everybody has, there's like, everybody has different charges within book, a larger charge. Yeah, our, our indictment was like, like this big, like it was over like, I don't know, 500 charges. Yeah. I don't know. What were the other, what were some of the other like crimes? Like murders, extortion, like all kinds of shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And these are all people that you, from the block. I knew everybody almost. So there's 70 people from that little neighborhood just gone yeah. overnight. Overnight. Wow. So crazy. Wow. Yeah. Did you have support from the community or were they kind of glad you guys were gone? Well, I feel like in a way certain people were mm. happy that they were gone because obviously it stopped completely like drug sales, like just a lot of things, maybe not right away because there was another indictment, which I wasn't part of, but, um, I'm sure it slowed things down. Well, you go there now, it does, there is no more dope traffic. At like all. it's nothing. It nothing. actually worked. Like it worked. The war on drugs doesn't work, but it actually, in the case of this little block, and it, it took worked. them a long, long, long time. Yeah, well, because crackheads figure out that that spot's hot, so they just go somewhere, go somewhere else. else. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you know you're getting time. What's what's the maximum? Well, they said uh, twenty five. If you took your case to trial and lost, yeah. So there was just no doing that, right? What evidence did they have against you? Well, we I don't know if people know, but me. I know that if I'm in the federal case, they have something on me no matter what or else I would not be there. Right. I know in my head I'm guilty or whatever the f You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no point. But weren't they filming? Weren't they recording crack sales? Yes, they were. But I've never actually got caught with anything. No. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Well, that's what the RICO cases so were. It, that's how they do that it. was created. Yeah, so exactly. you did, they didn't need to catch you with anything. So, um, on um, one of our like discoveries, because you had like they gave you like a whole box of discoveries of everybody mm -hmm. that talked. Not everybody that talked, but like the the bus, like the there was one that there was like, um, okay, we're we have so and so walking up to black, which is me. Mm -hmm. That's what they that was. I guess, That's what they called you. Yeah, black, right? And um, oh, we don't know if she's gonna go for it, like things like that. Oh, so they had undercover uh, buys mm -hmm. on you. Were they were those actually cops or just crackheads that they? One had was a cop and one was a crackhead. Okay. Cause there was like three different ones. How many buys did they have? Of mine, probably like four. Okay. Did and they I'm get like, you on video at all? Uh, not on video, but just recording uh -huh. like audio. Mm. And, um, yeah, just that. All they had were four buys mm -hmm. and they could have given you 25 years. And a phone call, which I wish they would have gave me a phone call. Cause that's only like three years max. What do you mean? Like when you get like when, when they listen on the call. I don't get it. Like, you know, you're like, oh, we have, we heard a phone call when your phones are tapped. Right. We have, we heard a phone call of this person and this person saying she's going to take money. It's right. just an example. Right. Like. Oh, I see that, what you're saying as opposed that, to, yeah, to actually I, physically serving. Exactly. Okay. Because that was, I was on a phone call as well, mm. but they didn't even give me that, mm. which would have been cool for me because yeah. that's only three years max. You right. Know? What were, what were the most major sentences you, uh, out of people in your, uh, your 20, indictment? Like there's some that are still in there. Wow. For, and this, these are murder cases? Yeah, or? I believe so. I never really looked into it, to be honest. If it wasn't me, I didn't even get mm. involved. It has nothing to do with me. I didn't go to court with them. Well, we first, we all went to court together. Mm -hmm. And then little by little, kind of everybody kind of went, started going on their own. Right. Or like, I don't know. You know, they started taking their deals. Did, so did everybody take deals? Almost everybody took deals, it's, I believe. So, so somebody took it to trial, you think? Uh, well, there is somebody that spoke 
I'm not sure. I don't think anybody took it to trial, to be okay. honest. It, I'm not really sure because once I was gone, I don't care. I mm -hmm. don't know. It doesn't involve me. Mm -hmm. I don't give a f mm -hmm. I just worry about mm -hmm. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. How long were you at, at MDC? I was at MDC for 13 months. Yeah. It's a long time to be in jail. Yeah. Um, so what, what was your deal? What did you call I, I, I signed for 60, 60 months and five years probation. Okay. So, so five years and five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they ship you off. Tell us about prison. This is where it gets fun. So I get sentenced. I'm only there for like another week mm -hmm. and then I get shipped to, um, Arizona. Mm. No, actually I'm lying. I got shipped to San Bernardino. San Bernardino. I was there for like two and a half weeks. But San Bernardino was like an actual jail, jail. Like it looked like the movies. Like there's a bunk and it has like the whole, yeah. like how it sounds in the movies and like, like a little walkway and there's like the tables mm -hmm. and like a little shower there. Mm -hmm. And you're basically there 24 seven. Yeah. So that was just where they were holding you till like, they shipped you off. Yeah. They were holding, those were like federal find, inmates. Find yeah. bed space for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then I'm there two weeks and then, um, I would, they drive us, well, they drive me to Arizona. I'm, uh, I'm in Arizona. I get there. I'm there for another month. Mm. I, this is funny, but so I'm in Arizona. I get there and I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm talking to these girls in Spanish, right? <laughs> and they're like, we don't speak Spanish. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. They're like, we are native. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I had no idea. Okay. I had no, I'm in my own world. Like mm -hmm. I'm in LA. I'm on drugs. Like. I didn't even think about natives. I didn't even think natives existed. Right. Native they, Americans. Native Americans. I love them. Those are my girls, mm -hmm. right? You look native. I, I am native. Yeah, my native I mean, name Mexicans is, are native. Yeah. My native name is wind in my hair. Oh. I like to call myself that sometimes. So I'm just kidding. But no, my <laughs> native friend from prison named me that. That was like our little thing. But so I'm in Arizona and I'm just there for like a, like a, just like a month. Uh, and then one night we're like, okay, you're getting shipped. So they drive us to the airport. Going to the airport. I've never been on a plane. What? Are you kidding me? So I'm like <laughs> getting sick. Oh my God. It's hot. Your first plane ride is Con Air. Yes. It's my first plane ride is Con Air. So we're in the bus, the, but the plane is late, right? Uh, the girls are flirty with the guys. I'm just there quiet. I'm feeling sick. It's so hot. So hot. So hot. And I'm just like, you know, mind you, I have my boyfriend, so I, I always thought I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to talk to these guys or whatever, right? And um, I'm in the plane. We get in the plane. I get my period. <sighs> but first, when we're getting off the bus to walk to the plane, there's a big old con air, and there's like 20 marshals lined up on one side and another 20 marshals lined up with like guns, mm. like it's like some movie shit. Mm -hmm. This is like new to me, right? And they put girls and guys on together. the same together yeah. on the plane. Okay. I have my hair down. I've always had kind of long hair, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sweating. I have a sweater and I'm like, I'm on my period. Like I'm handcuffed, you know, the bottom, the feet, everything, right? We're walking and I sit there and I'm just like, feel good. Mm. I'm like, you know, I'm not okay. Oh, like God. I am not it's, okay. I mean, you're, good thing I you're showing. No, not like that, but I know I wasn't okay. <laughs> I get in the car and I'm just like, I get like a hot flash or something where, you know, when you get this, you throw up. Mm. I threw up like on myself, like on the damn bus. Oh, like, no. no, it was terrible. Oh, you poor like, thing. No, this shit was messed oh, up. Like, I'm no. not ever going to forget that, right? Oh. And so, it's so embarrassing, even in prison, there's so many embarrassing things that happen to you and you shouldn't care because you're surrounded by other <laughs> losers who you sh like shouldn't care what they think about you, but you do. Hey, but we're losers we just have bad choices you totally right <laughs> but yeah but you know figure it so to speak yes i get it i get it uh so i okay i get they gave me water i'm feeling better mm -hmm. I, i'm getting up i get up it's a long path to walk to the bathroom right mm -hmm. there's only like 10 girls and the whole thing it's guys <laughs> i'm like me you know like i'm feeling like shit i'm in my period like i'm probably like all white from not feeling okay yeah and like guys are like dang girl like oh shit the whole f it's like the <laughs> walk of shame yeah, yeah you know but it's not the walk of shame because i'm supposed to be really flattered by all of this yeah. right i'm not an ugly person <laughs> like especially without makeup i feel like i'm better without makeup just saying guys <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I just have to be camera ready for the, sure, you know, fair. the pores. Anyways, so that's that. I come back, you know, I throw water on myself. Like, guys are, like, throwing, like, just, like, things, like, mm -hmm. at me. Like, not bad, but, like, trying to get my attention. I'm just, like, I'm too cool. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking at you fools. Like, I don't give a f I'm not, you know. So, okay, we get to Oklahoma, which is another detention center, mm -hmm. like, transit in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. It's too full. We can't put us in there. So they take us to this place called Grady County. Oh, that the girls were still wearing the striped shit. It was just a big room with like gang of bunks. The bathroom was in the corner, and there was like two bathrooms, like literally right next to each other, with the camera right in the fucking ass. Yeah. Oh. Like, bro, you want to come yeah, fucking right. wipe my ass or some <laughs> shit? You know. I was there for like thirty days. Um, I remember because it was when Michael Jackson died. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they had like the whole thing on TV mm -hmm. and all the girls were singing and crying. I was there for like 30 days. And then from there, um, he took us to uh, Minnesota on and, the bus. Oh, wow. That's a long bus ride. Yes. Wow. But you got to your home finally. I got to. After four institutions. Yes. yes I got to Minnesota to Wasika Federal okay. Institution. Wow. Um, I get there. We have they put us in the shoe for like two days. Just I guess I don't know why to find us a place, whatever. And um, then we get the shoe is the hole. The shoe is the hole. Okay. And um, I'm there for two days, and I go. They give us my our unit. I go to B unit. Now, are they pods or are they individual cells? No. So Minnesota was an old university. Oh wow! So it's kind of like more like a college. Base. Interesting. So like the rooms were like the actual rooms. Like the dorm. Yeah, yeah. So it's not cells. It's not doors. Wow. It's just a room mm -hmm. with two, you know, two bunks and the lockers. The rooms are pretty big. Wow. So it's pretty comfortable. Yeah. Wow. But when I get there, I go to the to the basement. Yeah. Because I'm a new person. Yeah. Like, you don't go and get a room. Yeah. It doesn't work that way, you know? Mm -hmm. That way you're turn. Yeah. So I get there. I have my... I mean, I started reading Twilight. You know, that's when it first came out. I read the whole books now, first month. Like, I didn't really leave. I would just go eat. I didn't really, like... Now, how was your... your You haven't done meth since you got locked up. I haven't done meth this whole time. So it's been, like, My over a year. My first year, while I was in MDC, I smoked weed and I drank. Okay, how do they... Tell, tell us about the drugs in jail. They would... People would smuggle it in. People would keister it in. I, I don't know, but... The weed? I would... The guys would send it to me. Through, through the, fi the on toilet. the fishing line. Wow. <laughs> so you get a bunch of weed covered in shit water. Yeah. That's great. So you would And these little pinner ass ones, like pinner, pinner, pinner. Yeah, yeah. But our sticks. main thing was we were drinking, you know, but once I got to prison, I didn't, um, I didn't do anything. Okay. I mean, so I might, might have snort a pill here and there for right. like the holidays just to like chill or whatever. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> a little you time. There's nothing wrong with that girl. Well, you know, a little vibe, you know, the music or whatever, but. Okay. So were you gaining weight back? I gave, yeah, but I started working out right away. As soon as I hit MDC and I started feeling myself more, I started, because, you know, they have a, like a stepper mm -hmm. and, a, and a elliptical, and mm -hmm. I started working out. Yeah. I got to Minnesota and I gained weight because I got a job at the kitchen in the bakery. Ah, yes. I wasn't working out yet as much. Like, I just was just, just I was just kind of like, I guess... Getting into the groove. Yeah. Like, you know, I got a job and I'm just, just getting, just getting settled, mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. say, you know, once I was already there like a year or like maybe like eight months, I started working out mm -hmm. and I would work and work out and that's it. Yeah. That's all. And most of the people locked up were there for drugs, I assume. Most girls. Yes. Yeah. That seems to be what most women and a are And a lot of women are there because of their men. Right. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's They're sad. there because they get roped into what their mans are doing, mm -hmm. and then they take a fall. Yeah, do you remember? Or like that? these white collar crimes, right? Like these ladies. Oh, I don't belong here with these people. Like, hello, you're stealing money from the people. How you can you not belong here? Right, right. They you look know? at it as like victimless. Exactly. But they're doing that also to feed the high. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So you're there for how long did you do? Did you do total? I did. I did my whole sixty months. I did five years. You couldn't get like a little well, time cut. No, I guess I got my time taken away. So um, I I did do the drug program, and they supposed to like deduct the whole year, but mm -hmm. I didn't have that because my. So the only way you're able to deduct time is if you're like have enough time, or like your points or your case. Mm -hmm. 
mine was a high case. Yeah. So I didn't really qualify for to deduction my time. Plus, I lost a little bit of time. For what? For a fight. You got in a fight. Yeah. Tell us about that real quick. Um. What is that? What is that? Pr- a female prison fight. It was. It was. Like? It was at an MDC. Mm. And it was over a drink. Like you drank my drink. Your Pruno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like I had the guy ship it upstairs. You got it. I was at a meet. I was at a, I think I was visiting mm. and I came back and everybody was off up and she drank my shit. Wow. So that carries over. So yes. you, if you get because the it's fight, already F, cause I was already, oh, you're already so, in the federal custody. It's already FBOP. Oh, yeah. wow. That sucks. Yeah. Can't get so, in one little fight. What, who won? It was like, uh, I got <laughs> up cause I got jumped. Oh, you got jumped. Yeah. Your ass got jumped. I say. So I, I no, honestly, I was up really my and i had to go to court that way <laughs> my eyes like no light they were like this so like, what happened like well, even many, the other ceos were like i don't even remember it was like it was like fast you got jumped yeah how mean, many people just two girls but i mean they just me up like Whoa. i was little thin ass face like i've always kind of been small like Whoa. she's my friend like we, we talk now like we still talk but um it was just something it was nothing major like we were good like happened it is what it is like yeah. it wasn't Damn, so you saw- Fight, friends fight, you know? Yeah, but yeah, but not beatdowns that cause you to lose yeah, good Yeah, but time. they were friends, but they were, but they were crimeys. Ah. Uh, they lived together and they were crimeys. They were in the same case. Mm. So obviously, if one, something pops up, like that's your homegirl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Damn. So you had to do the full five. Yeah. What year did you come home? 2012. 2011, actually. Because- mm. um, I had to go to the, full, the halfway house. And when you're in the halfway house, you're still considered like FBOB uh, custody. Mm-hmm. So I'm still busted. I yeah. didn't get out of the halfway house to 2012. Gotcha. Gotcha. And now look at you. Podcast star. I know. Cleaned your life up. Yeah. I've been, haven't done drugs. Yeah. I've been, I've been out since 2012. I lived yeah. in my, I got out to Miami actually. That's why'd you parole there? My mom uh, relocated while I was incarcerated. Okay. And she has my son. So obviously I was going to go where my family is, yeah. but I feel like that was like the best thing that ever happened. Like that, as soon as I got out, my mom moved back. However, mm-hmm. it just worked out that way. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like it's like the best thing. If I would have came back home, I probably would have fell back. Totally. If you would have gone back to the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you learn about yourself when you got sober? Well, I found out who Christina is. I didn't know who I was. I've been on drugs for so I was like 13 years old. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even know who this person was. Who was she? Me. Mm-hmm. Awesome ass girl, mm-hmm. woman, I should say, right? No, nah, I, I was just not like a hype, not on like, just not overreacting, just not like, because you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like I just- you Tapped into who you really were, yeah, which is a sweetheart. Like I cared about myself. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. all I cared about was myself and my family and like trying to find, trying to do better. Just- mm-hmm. Well, you know, I feel like I'm kind of still the same. I'll be lying if I say I've changed. I feel like I'm still the same. I'm just not on drugs anymore. Mm-hmm. And that was my only problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like drugs were my only problem. Yeah. It's so not many gangs. people. Yeah. But where does drug use come from? I'm fascinated by that. You know, what was the. I started it for fun. Right. That's how I started. Right. I don't feel like I use drugs to cover anything up. Yeah. My parents got divorced. I feel like it was the best thing that ever happened to my mom. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Did you have a relationship with your father still oh yeah okay and he's is he in la still no well my dad lives in rosarito okay but he crosses he has a house in uh san isidro so chola vista so he crosses the border often like wow. every day every other day wow so he kind of he kind of achieved the mexican dream come here make money retire back home yeah wow and what about your mother she works for the four seasons oh yeah that's yeah, right she's been at the four seasons for years okay great wait yeah. what do you think it was about the 90s and we'll wrap after this what, what was it about that era where Children of good, hardworking immigrants fell into the wrong path, we'll say. Well, like I said, for me, I, maybe it was just we were just friends playing outside. I grew up. And you were around bad forces when you were outside, right? Yeah, I mean, like if that's everybody negative would've... energy no matter what because, mm-hmm. you know, you're there to protect your street, blah, 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 blah. You know, like, oh... This guy doesn't belong here. He, let's get him out. Things like that. But I mean, that's just, that was just normal. You just wanted to belong. I think I just wanted to belong. And if belonging had been to like a group of people, uh, you know, playing Frisbee, that's what you would have done. Yeah. But, but I don't think that was my thing. I think I just liked that. The whole, 
I'm a gang member. I'm mm-hmm. a, a chola. Mm-hmm. Like, I never consider myself a chola though. Like, what's the difference between what you are and a chola? I'm a Mexican woman. I'm a Latina. <laughs> yeah. So you never consider yourself a chola? No, I never consider myself a chola. But what you know is a chola? Well, now I feel like it's like a look. Yeah. Like a trend, like a certain look, you know? But before, a chola was like an actual girl that's from a gang. Mm-hmm. Well, weren't that, wasn't that yeah, what you I, were Yeah, but I just didn't think it was cool. Like to yeah. call myself a chola. Like I'm yeah. a fucking chola. Like You were like better than that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but were you though? <laughs> no, like I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you th- does that exist? But I wasn't like that girl that, oh, you know, like she's just around because of her boyfriend. Right. You like, had your own I was me. hustle. You had your own I was me. Identity. Like I didn't have a yeah. family member that was from the same gang. Like I didn't have a boy. I, I did have a boyfriend that's from but that's not like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that was after the fact, mm-hmm. like. It was me. Have tell us about the people that you ran with. What what has become of them in today? H- have people made it out like you? Yes, a lot of them are doing so well. Right, they've reintegrated. Yeah, they're, they're maybe maybe there's like one or two or three that you know is out, but it's not like they're out gangbanging. They're just on drugs. On drugs, right? Just completely different lives. Like yeah, yeah, you're a gang member, but you're not a gangbanger. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're just you're doing drugs, you're and your out, whole life is revolving. And you're just around. out there doing whatever you're doing to get money for drugs right. or whatever. It's, yeah, it's not you're not doing it for the cause of the home, of the hood or yeah. the gang or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, does gang banging exist in LA anymore? Yes. No. Of course it does. Really? I have a lot of lot of youngster homies that are active. That are extremely. But. Now the neighborhoods are different. Like just, is, it's, it's is there gang banging in the avenues anymore in, in Glassell Park? Yes. Yeah. But it's just different. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's just completely different. It's like, not obvious anymore to a, to an outsider exactly, pulling up there. Exactly. It's not like a group of guys. They're just they just look different. Mm-hmm. I feel like they just look different. So you can't skinny jeans. They're wearing skinny well, jeans. You know my I I to call them my little babies. Right? They're not skinny jeans. They don't wear skinny jeans. They're just normal boys little baggy pants or whatever, mm. but you know what I'm saying? It just depends. Like once they hit us, once they hit the jail, then they start behaving different. Mm-hmm. Cause the jail is what kind of molds them or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It all kind of comes from jail with men. I feel like the orders go, come yeah, from jail. They come in us. They, they go in a certain way, but when they come out, mm. they come out a different person, but that's what happened to me too. Right. Right. But you, you know, thank but God. I'm a girl, so it's different. Yeah. I mean, as a teenager, you get what yeah, I'm saying? Because that's yeah. when it starts. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't start at 18, 19, 20 years old. No, nah, if people that start gangbanging at like 20, they're not, I feel like they're not really about it. I think that's it. How it, kind of what it is mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Like now, like nobody starts at 12, mm. 13 years old anymore. I'll tell you what, it's not now as fun. You had fun. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> now I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Yeah. It's not the same. Like what kind of woman would I be if I'm out there on the corner? Mm. Like- no, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Gang bang only... doesn't age well. No, it's just not, it's not, it's not the right thing. Like mm. I'm not like, what kind of fucking person would I be? Mm. If you're young, fuck it, keep doing your shit. You know, if you're young, if that's what you want to, mm-hmm. if that's the lifestyle you want to be in, then hey, mm-hmm. don't cry. Mm-hmm. So you think it was a choice? You don't think it was like nah, it was po- a poverty that pushed you guys into the streets? Mm. Because clearly, some, clearly there was some, some. there's some economy involved. There's all these people buying cracks. So clearly, it was it was a money making decision, like for you, yeah, with your with your child for and your selling, habit. yeah, but not like to be not to be hanging out with my friends. Yeah, it's so it's, it's a choice. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's a choice. Well, there's a, a lot of guys and women that were born and raised there, and they're not like that. My sister is not mm, nothing like me. Mm, we're completely different. Mm, yeah. Well, you're f- killing it, and I want everybody to go watch indicted TV. And I want people that need a teeth whitening. You know, maybe you're on meth. You could really use a teeth whitening. <laughs> you're going to go check out her teeth whitening. She's the tooth fairy of I LA. Am, I am the LA tooth fairy. The LA tooth fairy. H E. Yeah. The and, LA tooth fairy. And you've got great merch. Oh uh, yeah. Know? I have my indicted uh, t-shirts. Orange is the new negra. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's yes, fire. Right? That's what's I up. love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's your, your podcast is like, like the new thing, I feel like if you're if you Thank God. you know are into this culture and this brand, you have to go check out what she's doing over at Indicted TV. Um, if you mind, just stick around and we could talk 
uh, some fun prison stuff. We're going to do a quick little bonus episode. Okay, Is that cool? Fine. Like yeah, half an fine. hour. Go over to patreon.com slash the connect show for more Christina La Negra Cruz. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much. This no, has been wonderful. No, thank you for having me. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank of you guys. Course. Peace out.